Okay, so what I'm going to talk about um, with you today is the bipartite meeting um, and also uh, the filling in of the formative feedback sheet during that. Um, it, it's mainly going to be based around the formative feedback sheet, um, but I am going to sort of along the way give you little hints and tips and things um, around conducting the bipartite. The first thing I'm going to do though is to set out some things that you should do prior to the bar prior to the bipartite and these are going to be written on the sheet here in black then they'll be rubbed out and then we'll start on actually filling in the formative feedback sheet properly so the first thing that you need to think about with the bipartite is um, when and where is this going is this meeting going to take place okay um, who is going to bring the paperwork Remember that you're going to need somewhere, um, you know, that, that's nice and quiet for you to undertake the bipartite. Um, and possibly as well, you need to think about, are you going to need a computer? Are you going to need um, images, radiographs, etc.? So these are sort of one or two things that you really should be thinking about. Um, the other thing as well um, that, that's always uh, useful is to think about how long is the bipartite going to going to last um, so for example um, bipartite should really be lasting around one and a half hours minimum um, but depending on the student you know that they, they can take um, up to three so this may be a good student who's got a lot of things in their portfolio to show you um, but also a poor student may need a lot more time in trying to explain things so the key thing here is with regards to the length is are you actually prepared for that do the staff in the department know that you could be away for up to that length of time um, you need to let the student know as well about the portfolio okay that they're going to need to bring that with them um, that you're going to look at it and etc etc okay um, you also might want to think about the types of evidence that you want to see from them with regards uh, their competencies but that's what we're going to talk through in a moment now in the rest of the video we're going to focus on the filling in of the formative feedback sheet and how that fits in with um, you know you signing off the students competencies now um, for the rest of the video I'll be using green to show you the types of feedback and signposting um, that you might want to give the student and blue will indicate the types of evidence that the students will produce um, regards to sort of evidencing their competencies. Okay. So first off as you can see there the, the first um, learning outcome that's there is identify and describe the role of ethics in the study of the discipline okay so remember if you remember what you should always be doing as well that I forgot to mention earlier on is you should always have the competencies with you and available to you while you're undertaking the um, undertaking the bipartite so you'll know that the two um, kind of competencies that this particular learning outcome is broken down into are recognizing how personal attitudes can influence the patient experience and influence colleagues and also the legal basis for introducing themselves and um, gaining consent from the patient so with regards to evidence um, we can look of course at, at things like um, reflections for this particular competence okay we can look at things like witness statements particularly around um, that second one there around introducing themselves to the patients and things like that um, there's types of reflections that you might want to get from the students around the first little mini competency there around personal attitudes and things like that um, are around things like perhaps reflections around um, the 
um, HCPC and the Society's Code of Conduct. Reflections around perhaps things like uh, team working. Um, um, perhaps interactions with um, uh, challenging challenging patients maybe um, but also within there there should be some sort of recognition um, of of how their interaction can influence other people as well so it's about interactions really remembering as well that there are um, uh, sort of journal articles and things like that that can be integrated um, into those reflections. Now, with regards to um, the types of feedback that you might want to give the students, um, this can be sort of things like direction towards journal articles. If, if they haven't got any witness statements and those sorts of things, um, so it's, it's, it's often about looking in their portfolio and identify um, what's missing from it. Remember as well that a reflection doesn't have to be specific for a specific learning outcome. Um, so, for example, a reflection um, may, in this particular instance, because there's a competency a little bit further on, um, that's around keeping patients' privacy and dignity and, and all of those sorts of things. There's nothing to stop a particular competent, nothing to stop a particular reflection covering more than one competency. Okay, so if we turn towards the uh, next um, learning outcome for the module there around recognizing the change in nature of knowledge, etc. So there are a number of different things that the students can bring with them. Um, to identify their, their meeting this particular learning outcome. Now, if we again, if we look towards the competencies, you can see that there are three um, different competencies that come under this learning outcome. And they are identifying their own learning needs, demonstrating how feedback has developed their learning, uh, differences in practice, and use these opportunities to gain a variety of experiences, and clinical reasoning and decision making. So if we take the first one of those, identification of own learning needs, so there should be some sort of link within their portfolio um, to the feedback that they've been that they've been getting and their action plans. So here you will be looking for things like the weekly feedback sheets. So the students' weekly feedback sheets, um, as well as obviously being collected, should be then feeding into action plans and SWOC or SWOT analyses. Um, so it's not so much that the students collect in the weekly feedback sheets it's also to do with what they are actually doing with those weekly feedback sheets now with regards to the other competencies we can look at um, for example that the second one there recognizing the differences in practice so this can be perhaps a reflective piece from the students around um, you know around using different techniques um, for perhaps knees, uh, hips, lateral hips, etc. So anything like that, that um, within there. But it's, you know, this can also be reached by a, a discussion with yourself as well as the, as the mentor. And this can also be applied to that third one there, which is around the emergence of clinical reasoning. So you can give um, the students scenarios you know about whether or not um, a request is justified and the student can either discuss that with you or again write up um, perhaps a little sort of um, essay or reflective piece it all depends really on, on how you want the student um, to evidence those now with regards um, you giving the students feedback for this particular competency um, it could just be something as simple as the student um, needs to um, collect uh, more feedback from the radiographers that they're working with. Um, remember that this can also be evidenced on their self-report form, so you can go um, and speak to this, the radiographers they've been working with if you're a little bit concerned. But also, because the student has those particular um, self-report tool um, feedback uh, sheets, they know who they've been working with so they can follow up perhaps collecting feedback off those particular radiographers. 
Um, you can also direct the students um, to technique guides, perhaps. Um, um, you can direct your students towards uh, reflections on working with different radiographers, perhaps. Um, and also, you know, particularly the um, eye refer as well, which is from the, you know, the RCR guidelines for making the best use of a radiology department. They're also a very useful source of potential feedback for, um, well, sorry, potential signposting um, for your students.